All right, the last part, I will show you uh, how to run this code uh, in SAS. Um, and then I use the code uh, lecture four, lag four SAS code. Um, and this is the code being posted on uh, Canvas already. Uh, this is under uh, uh, lecture number four, so you can find this code. Uh, the first thing I did is actually I specify a library uh, for lecture number four with a specific route, um, a specific path in my computer. And then when I run this, um, it automatically link, because um, I already run this, uh, there's still some error there. Um, so if you just run this, you will see they create a uh, library called the lag four. And this will include all the SAS data set uh, in this specific folder. Um, but if you use the uh, Elabs version or uh, Citrix version, this be a little bit tricky, um, as I showed in the uh, uh, lecture number one and lab lecture number two. So you can look at that code. Specifically, uh, instead of directly using the uh, uh, directory in your local computer, you probably need to use a dollar sign client and then use a C something like that and everything after that will be the, uh, the the directory in your local computer but this is really uh up to uh if you use a uh, uh, desktop version versus use a uh, citrix version but if you still have problem of loading data using the citrix version um you can talk with me either at my office or maybe after class um, so i can help you figure out how uh, you can get access to the uh, uh, to the data using the ELAX version. All right, um, and uh, in this lecture, we actually the first mo the first uh, model we fit is this uh, linear regression model uh, with uh, age, gender, and the interaction between an age and gender. Um, this will be using the uh, uh, lecture four uh, as pp1 data uh, so this is original data so before we actually fit this model in prop reg um, we actually need to create a uh, interaction term between age and sex um, so the first step the data step is to create uh, a new data set which include the interaction between age and sex so you can see the, in this original data, um, lag four as PV1, what included is the ID number, uh, the sex or gender, uh, systolic blood pressure and age. There's no interaction between sex and, and age. Um, and the, here's the syntax, the data, pro, uh, the data procedure, um, the, like the name right after data will be the, a new data set you created after run this data step. And the set uh, data will be the data you use to create this new data. So this is to say we want to use this data, uh, lag four SPB1, which is data right here, and create a new data set called the new SPB1. And I will save that in the same folder. Um, then this will include a interaction variable between age and sex. So if you just run that step first, um, you will see that you will have a new SPB1 uh, data set. So if you click on that, you can see this will not only include all these uh, predictor variables in the original data set, and also include a uh, interaction term between age and sex. So this is nothing but just the, the product between the sex and age. So you can see if sex equal to one, this is exactly the same as age, but if sex, it, it was, but if sex or gender equal to zero, so everything here will be equal to zero. All right, and then we can run this uh, regression model with uh, age, uh, gender and also the age gender interaction. So that's the one 
um, we just fit so proc reg um, this model called model one the first we have this uh, ANOVA analysis of variance table with the sum of squares and uh, MSE, things like that. Um, and then we have this primary estimate table. Um, and remember, uh, we got the, the gender effect is negative 12.96. So it means being male, your expected systolic blood pressure will be about 13 units lower than female. Um, and then the interaction terms is not significant. If you still remember that, um, an estimate is negative 0.01. All right. Um, and uh, the second one is to examine if gender is a uh, confounder uh, for the relationship between age and uh, uh, systolic blood pressure. Um, we actually uh, run two models. Um, the first model is the we call the N adjusting model. Um, we just directly use age as the only predictor variable for systolic blood pressure. Um, and the second model uh, will adjust for uh, gender effects. Um, and here, uh, before we use gender effects, uh, we specify sex or gender as the dummy variable. So if you use a class statement, this will specify the variable here as the uh, categorical variable, but this is actually a dummy variable because I have only two categories. Um, and uh, importantly, we will use this syntax to specify uh, sex equal to zero as a reference group. This is to say we treat the female as a reference group. Um, so if you still remember what I said in the lecture, uh, if you, in SAS, if you do not specify a reference level, SAS will automatically use the largest number as a reference group. So because it's a zero and one variable, um, if you do not say this, uh, specify the reference group, SAS will treat uh, category one, which is male, as a reference group. All right, and then we can feed these two models together. And this is the first model. Uh, and this is the, uh, um, this is the second model. And this is the first model. Uh, first model is a model with only HS predictor. So if you still remember the, uh, uh, estimate is 0.98, but the, for the second model adjusted for uh, the gender effects, and here uh, gender equal to zero, which is female, is the reference group. Sex equal to one, which is the male, is the um, is the other group, is the higher level group, um, and then um, adjusted estimate for age effects is 0.95, um, and uh, there's a tiny little difference. Point it's about 0 0.96, um, 0 0.96 versus 0.98. You'll see there's a very little different change uh, for the primary estimate uh, between these two models. And then uh, we actually just use that 10% rule of sum. Um, we'll believe age uh, and uh, uh, SPB relationship will not be confounded by gender. All right, and then the next is we're looking uh, at the uh, uh, predictor variable uh, uh, QET index, the uh, age groups, and also smoking status with systolic blood pressure. This will use a different data set uh, called the LAG4 uh, SPB2. So that'll be, uh, the original data will be this. This is the data posted on the web, uh, on Canvas. Uh, so this new data set, um, still we want to predict systolic blood pressure, but predictor variable is the QUET body index, the smoking status and age. Age here is not original age in years, but this is age category. One is 30 to 39, two is uh, 40 to 49, and three, four, uh, 450 to 59 and the 4460 uh, and the plus. 
Okay, and if you still remember, um, the first model we run is we actually uh, manually create these three dummy variables. Um, and uh, this dummy variable equal to one, Z1 equal to one. Uh, so the three dummy variables, Z1, Z2, and Z3. So the Z1 will indicate uh, if the age group is equal to two. Z2 indicate if the age group equal to three. Z3 indicate if the age group equal to four. And only if these three variables all equal to zero indicate age group equal to one, which is the reference group. Um, so after we run this model, we got the, a new data set called the new lag for SPB2. And the set statement will set the, uh, the original data set. So as I said, this will be the original data set. And this is the, the resultant um, a data set after we run this data procedure. Um, and here you can see that we not only have the uh, uh, three predictor variable in original format, and then we create the three dummy variables. Um, and we can look at that, like say age group equal to one uh, is corresponding to all three dummy variable equal to zero. Uh, equal to four, that means you have to be in uh, C3 equal to one. So three means Z2 equal to one, and two indicates Z1 equal to one. Um, and after we have this model, we actually can run this first model we run is the full model. So remember the full model, we have 15 um, terms, including the, uh, the main effects, QUET, and the three uh, main effects for age group, and the one main effects for smoking status, then we have all these combination of the uh, interactions. So the first degree interaction, uh, which is the, the two-way interaction, including QUET and age, QUET and smoking status, and smoking status with age. And also we have the three terms for the three-way interaction because the, the age group have a, a three degree of freedom. And then if we run this, uh, we'll have this, uh, parameter estimate table, like as I said, the first one is always a uh, ANOVA analysis of variance model. We have sum of squares. Um, we have the uh, MSE, and we have the degree of freedom for that model. Um, and then you will have the R squared for this model. It's pretty good R squared, about 0.86. Um, and also the RMSE and also the, the coefficients of variance. Um, and then because you asked for type three uh, sum of squares and the um, SAS also uh, output the sum of squares, type three sum of square for each of the terms. So remember the type three sum of square is the uh, last uh, entry kind of sum of squares is assuming that this corresponding variable always be added last. Uh, into the model when all the other variables already exist. Um, the last one is the solution table or parameter estimate. So we already showed this. So we have the corresponding terms for uh, each of these 15 terms plus a intercept term, which is a beta zero. Um, and you can use all the combina different combinations of this beta parameter estimate to have eight different models for the age subgroups defined by age and uh, smoking status. Um, so basically there are four different age groups and two smoking status, um, and four times two will be eight groups. Um, but those estimates will just be dependent on um, the uh, combinations of these parameters. So you can reference the slides uh, for the lecture for that. Okay, so next one is we want to show, we run the same model, same full model. We don't have to create a new variable with dummy variables, but we can just directly use the original data set. Um, so again, I'll show you one more time, the original data set, like for SPB2. Uh, this include SPB, SE outcome, the uh, QUET index, smoking status, and also the age groups. So smoking status is a binary. Zero means non-smoker, one means smoker. Um, and age group, one, two, three, four, indicate different range of age. 
And this is um, actually a shortcut. You don't have to create all these dummy variables. But if you use the proc GLM, just use this uh, vertical sign um, between the three predictor variables and uh, says you run a full model with all these predictor variables with as the main effects um, and also include the first order interaction, um, which is the two way interaction and all the uh, uh, three, all the terms of three way interaction uh, with second order interaction. So if we run this model, uh, you will see we got the similar things right there. I got the same sum of square, same MSE, and then same R squared because it's the same model. And here you have uh, more terms. Um, so this will always include the baseline, the reference group. So the reference group of smoking status, although this have nothing, um, everything's NA here. Uh, and estimate the zero is not really means it's a zero. It's actually not the, um, not the possible value there. And also include all the reference terms for age and also including the reference uh, level interaction. But this terms is actually not included in the previous model we use dummy variables. But basically, uh, they are all the same. Uh, just uh, except for all these um, NA terms right there. All right, and then remember the next is we run a different model to do the partial F test. Um, and then we run the full model again and we run model with certain turn not equal to zero. Um, and we will manually do this partial F test. So we already have the previous sum of square uh, for the full model. And this will be sum of square for the uh, reduced model when the uh, eight different terms equal to zero. So the degree of freedom will be seven. And we actually use that sum of square for the full model minus sum of square here divided by eight and then divided by the MSE uh, reported in the full model right here, so this is MSE, and then we get the partial F score. Uh, and to do uh, F test is comparing the F score with the uh, critical value uh, of the F distribution uh, for the corresponding degree of freedom. Um, and this is the second part for the re reduced model, and we do a second uh, analysis for uh, the reduced model. And these are also the, uh, the same model. This is using the dummy variable. This is without using the dummy variable, uh, just using the original data set, but we'll give you the same reduced model uh, with uh, uh, the reduced model sum of squares. So what do we need? Uh, this is reduced. This is a second one we run actually using the original data set. You have a, a bunch of uh, N available uh, terms to report. And this is the, the first one is the one uh, we use dummy variables, Z1, Z2, Z3, indicate uh, age equal to two, age equal to three, age equal to four groups. Um, and this will give you the same uh, sum of square. We can use that for partial F test. All right, um, that's all for the SAS demonstration. And um, I would suggest you to look at this and combine with uh, a previous part, uh, which is part four of lecture number four, so you can better understand the, uh, the dummy variable uh, section.